Wake up, sheeple. Sheeple. The word sheeple is a portmanteau, which to me sounds a bit like some exotic species of whale I'd never heard of until I read about it. But that's actually not what portmanteau means. A portmanteau is a compound word. Two words that are mashed together and become a new word, like smog, smoke and fog, brunch, breakfast, and lunch. We don't get caught up on the original two words when we hear the word brunch or smog. But sheeple's new enough to occasion a pause, right? Sheep, people, sheeple must be an insult. It's not so new, though. It's been around long enough to become a cliché. It became cliché two, three years ago when conspiracy theorists on YouTube would use the comment, overuse the comment, after posting their videos, making all kinds of wild claims. And they'd say things like, there is a cabal of Satan-worshipping cannibals who are determined to bring the president down. Wake up, sheeple! QAnon members use the word to insult gullible liberals. The sheeple don't understand the truth about Comet Pizza. But actually, the last time I saw sheeple in use it was just a few days ago. I was out in western Massachusetts, and I saw it on a billboard on the side of the highway. Western Massachusetts, solid blue country. Every county in that state voted for Joe Biden. The billboard said this, Republican sheeple don't believe in the truth. No matter who the target is, sheeple is an insult. Pizzagate believers and Massachusetts Democrats don't believe in much, but they both hate the idea of a human being being a sheep. Which is interesting because sheep is exactly how Jesus wants us to understand ourselves. I am the good shepherd. That's what he says. And so if he's the good shepherd, we're the sheep, right? That's what he's saying. I know my own sheep and my own sheep know me. That's us. We're the flock. We're the sheep. I understand the resistance, though. I try to follow Jesus, but I totally get the resistance. It is in me, bone deep, like it's in you. You don't want to be a sheep. You don't want to be sheeple. You want to think for yourselves. My older sister is a restaurant professional and a food person, and she's spent the last couple of months consulting on a goat farm up in northern Michigan. They make goat cheese. She's helping them make it even more delicious, developing recipes, things like that. What a great job for your sister to have because I've been the recipient of some delicious goat cheese. Anyhow, check out this video that she sent me. I know that goats aren't sheep. I know there is a slight genetic difference, but nobody sent me a video of sheep this week, so the goats will be a stand-in. Look at them blindly going through the paces. They're remarkable animals, actually. Elizabeth, my sister, she says that the bad rap goats get is the male goats, that the female goats are actually wonderful and charming. Every bad thing you've ever heard about a goat is a male goat. They're great to look at. Look at them moving along. And yet, I don't think anybody is going to watch that video, this video, and think to themselves, now that is what I want to be when I grow up. I want to be the member of a flock. I want to be a sheep. We don't want to be the member of a flock. We want to be ourselves. Be yourself, right? That's the great American mantra. It's why the Democratic Party in Massachusetts hates sheep. The very notion of sheep. They believe that each one of us is an independent, logical, rational individual. They believe it. I believe it. You believe it. We believe it. It's written into the DNA of our country. We are capable of thinking for ourselves as individuals. And really, we're at our best when we are at our truest selves, right? That's the belief. Be yourself. Liberal America, liberal America, has a political philosophy which holds that when autonomous, self-sufficient, free-thinking individuals are able to do whatever they please, I'm using the plural, but it's really all about the individual, when you are able to do whatever you please, because you are a rational, free-thinking, free agent, owing no allegiance to anyone but your truest self. When this happens, we reach our highest good. 
individually, certainly, but also collectively. Come on, sheeple. Think for yourself. Don't just blindly follow the herd. Weirdly, this kind of liberalism is what lets conservatives, it's what is letting conservatives right now sidestep the call to overhaul the policies and the culture that allow and encourage even police to kill black people. That is how bone deep in America liberalism runs. Come on, sheeple. Derek Chauvin acted as an individual, right? He acted on his own. This is the belief, the argument. You've probably heard it. He's not the symptom of a pervasive and historic American madness that wants to exterminate blackness in a slow, grinding genocide. He's an individual. He's not the product of a system. And he's not an irrational animal blindly following his own fear and bloodlust. He's a rational thinker. He made a choice. And now he's going to pay for that choice. The system works. Nothing needs to change. Come on, sheeple. The truth is that none of us are rational or individual. Donald Winnicott says there's no such thing as a baby. Show me a baby and I'll show you a mother. Extend that line of thought. There's no such thing as an individual. Show me an individual and I will show you a family, a community, a church, a culture. Show me a person, and I will show you the system that made them. I think, I think, I think, me, I think that we should repeal the Second Amendment. I really do. And I think this because when I was a little kid, I wanted a gun. Every other kid in my fifth grade class was taking hunter safety, and my God, I wanted to do it too. I wanted a twenty-two rifle. And my dad sat me down and he said to me about that. I probably asked for a gun about 10,000 times at this point. He said to me, he got all intense and he says to own a gun. This is what he said to own a gun is to admit a lack of faith. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword down. More than that, he said to own a gun is to assume the role of God because you're ready to take a life and life isn't ours to take. That got right in my mind and in my heart. My cousin lives in Tennessee. Recently, just last week, he posted a photo of an assault rifle, his assault rifle, with a new scope, leaning on a wall next to one of those wooden signs from Target that have sayings on them, and the sign said, Blessed. Now, he believes God wants him to own an assault rifle because he spent his entire childhood and adolescence in a church which pounded that message into his head like an insistent drumbeat. We didn't reach these positions on our own as free-thinking individuals. We were guided, shepherded. We were sheep. QAnon believers who laugh at sheeple are following the dictates of Facebook and YouTube, al YouTube algorithms, right? That's how they reach their conclusions. They're being guided by these algorithms that steer them toward hateful propaganda, which grows increasingly intense with every 25 clicks. That's how it works. That's where their shepherd is leading them. And even if you could escape every influence that has ever shaped who you are and how you think and what you hold dear, you spend your entire life on a desert island free of influence, even then, you're still not rational. Maybe you're an individual, but you're still not rational. Instead, you find yourself following the demands of your own appetites your own animal desires, suffering what Stanley Hauerwas calls the tyranny of your own desire. We're not individual, and we're not rational. Wake up, sheeple. The question isn't, are you going to be a sheep? That question has been answered, and the answer is, bah. The question is this, who's your shepherd? Who is your shepherd. Some people 
struggle to answer that question. Some people are so enthralled to the powers that rule their lives that they cannot even spot them. They don't even know they're being guided. They just know this, get, spend, earn more, me, mine, right? They don't know why they think that way. Who's your shepherd? It's a hard question to answer, but the great thing about being in the church, and I thank God for his providential hand, her providential hand, for putting me and you in the church. One of the great things is this. We don't have to answer it. Jesus answers it for us. I am your shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. Those others don't care about you. They want to use you. The algorithm the Massachusetts Democrats, your own animal appetites, none of them care for you. And then he says this, I am the good shepherd. I put the sheep before myself, sacrificing myself if necessary. This is why the Father loves me, because I freely lay down my own life and I am free to pick it up again. We have a shepherd who died for us. And then he took his life back up again, rose from the dead so that he could be with his sheep. Wake up, sheep hole. The sunlit warmth of his brown skin is not a theory. Christ is a living God who overcomes the strength of death to step into the center of our lives and be our shepherd. Now, Mainline Christians resist that kind of metaphor as much as we might love Psalm 23. We try and protect ourselves from divine intensity by intellectualizing God and making her a brainy puzzle. That can be fun, but right now, more than a year into a pandemic in a time of great unrest and pain and change, the God of the philosophers is useless. A theory cannot love you. There is no abstraction that will die for you. There is no idea that knows your name. Your shepherd does. God is with you right now. She knows your name. The Lord is your shepherd. The shepherd gets up early to make a barely sustainable living. God could be a puppet master but he wants to be a shepherd. A shepherd is a regular, common person. God could be a glorious king, but he wants to be a shepherd. A shepherd protects, nurtures, comforts. A shepherd does whatever it takes to keep his flock safe. A shepherd has scars on his hands. A shepherd works hard. I hate to mix metaphors, but if Jesus had been issuing this teaching in modern day Chicago, he probably wouldn't have used an agricultural metaphor. Instead, he might have said, I am the good crossing guard. A good crossing guard gets up early. She pulls on long underwear she bought on sale at Target and then a long sleeve waffle shirt. She puts on a hoodie and a bright yellow vest. She gets on the L to her appointed corner, the one that you cross every day. And the whole time, it's your face that is in her mind. And she is thinking about nothing but getting you home safely. I am the good crossing guard. Jesus is the good shepherd, the Lord is your shepherd. We have members who are in the hospital right now. The Lord is your shepherd. Single mothers who for 13 months have spent time juggling work and homeschool. The Lord is your shepherd. Saints who are still locked down in nursing homes. The Lord is your shepherd. High school seniors whose graduation ceremonies will not be held in person. The Lord is your shepherd. St. Paul's members whose loved ones died of COVID. St. Paul's members whose lives have been changed by this disease. The Lord is your shepherd. Black church members reeling and incredulous as white church members finally wake up to our complicity with slavery's undead aftermath. The Lord is 
your shepherd. An entire congregation, all of us, weary of the world's pain, tired of being separated. Don't worry. You are not an individual. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to plot out the pandemic's end. We are not in charge. The Lord is our shepherd, and he will see us safely home. And this doesn't mean that we just get to rest, right? Do nothing, relax in the shepherd's care. Because the shepherd's standing, an actual shepherd, James Rebank, he wrote this. The shepherd's standing depends upon the quality of his sheep, her sheep. How do you know if a shepherd is good or not? Well, you look at their sheep. God needs us to be at his very best. The Psalm says this, this is the 23rd Psalm, for his name's sake. Right? The Lord me the Lord leads me in righteous paths for his name's sake. What do you think your secular friends think when they realize or are told that you belong to a church that loves lesbians? The Lord makes us walk in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I bet they think about God a little bit differently because of who you are and the flock that you belong to. If the sheep aren't at their best, the shepherd isn't either. The Lord is your shepherd, and he wants you to shine, and he wants to protect you. And the way he does this is with words more often than not. I want to read a list of Jesus' commands to his sheep. Imagine if we all had the courage to surrender and admit that we are indeed in his flock. Here's what he tells us. This is every command that Jesus gives in the New Testament. This is his rod, his staff. This is the feast that he gives us in the presence of our enemies. This is the oil he pours upon our heads. This is his teaching. There is a revolution in these words. And there is ancient neglected truth. Listen carefully. Love God before money. Pray. Don't be a hypocrite. Be merciful. Have faith. Give to the poor. Love yourself. Love others just as much. Forgive. Temper your anger. Keep your promises. Love your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Be reconciled to one another. Do not judge. Be peaceful. Wash each other's feet. Put your weapons away. Seek the lost. Preach the gospel. Let the last be first. Exalt the humble. Love the poor. Turn the other cheek. Go the extra mile. Repent. Take up the cross. Rejoice and be glad. The Lord is your shepherd. That is his care. Amen.